Let's welcome in Gabe Iger. Oh, you great three-time All-American. He owes Big 12 today. He's hosting the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker Lehman. It's a former offensive lineman. Fuck you, Gabe. Look how What's up, you boys? Got, dude. I'm trying to lose weight here. And look at you. It's Jesus not that hard. Christ. Just what don't eat do? like an asshole. I mean, <laughs> actually, yeah, that's, that's fair. That, that, that has been kind or, of the great revelation. Is it the eating or the drinking? Is it the eating or the drinking? Yeah, I am. I, I try not. I'm, I'm a kind of i've turned into a wine guy you know wow. wine guys, has a lot of know. calories though gabe i but thought you'd be like a tequila yeah, every, meat guy everything in moderation you know everything in moderation but <laughs> no, I just, what, what, what how am i living if, if if aaron immediately goes to drinking and our producer in our uh stream yard chat says or drink like an asshole hey guys relax okay i get paid to drink on saturdays i have to it's for the post game show <laughs> of course uh, yeah gabe so what's up man smart. what's Hey, bro, how's Boomer Sooner Nation feeling today? Everybody doubting, even though all the numbers were actually on Oklahoma's side, but, you know, resume wasn't. You know, the film's telling us Texas is better on the lines. Longhorn Superior, how the Boomer's feeling today? I don't think you could feel much better if you're an OU oh, yeah. fan. And clearly, it, it has a lot to do with beating Texas, but I think it's even more than that. It, you, you think about last year how it went with Venables and there were some question marks like, Hey, you know, is, and I was not, I, I had full faith in, in Venables just cause I knew the type of guy he is, the type really? of coach he is. Cause he was I my know. defensive coordinator for my first three years at Oklahoma. Oh damn. I just, so I, I knew, I knew how his approach was and I knew it would take a little time and they just needed some better players. But I think OU fans clearly happen happy about beating your rival, right? Getting to rub their face in it. That's that's what college athletics is all about, right? That's college football. Yeah, hell yeah. But it feels like the trajectory of this thing for Oklahoma with Venables leading the way. It, it feels like it's headed in a great direction. And with the SEC coming next year and everything yep. that comes with that, I think OU fans are kind of just – there's a sense of excitement, but also a sense of relief, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, yeah, oh, 100%. okay, we got yes, the right guy. Yes, yes. Oh, that, I mean, that, that's what we were talking about all off season, and that's what I most missed on was, like, I accused Oklahoma fans of doing, you know, gold-level mental gymnastics. Talking about, oh, well, no, he had to get the right guy. Because, you know, I saw a guy who took over the most successful, probably consistent college football program in the last three decades, and then immediately it all went to shit. And he's a defensive guy, and the defense was shit. And I'm like, okay, he, and he has no head coaching resume to fall back on. So we're saying that. Now, we did say he's doing great at recruiting, but like outside of that, like, I don't know, man. May, maybe Oklahoma missed. And with a win like this, all of that changes. All of that's erased. And yep. now, like you said, oh, he's one of the favorites. Dylan Gabriel should be the Heisman favorite right now. You feel confident entering the SEC. It's fascinating what 60 minutes can do for a fan base and for a school as a whole. There's no doubt about it. And I, I am not one of these OU people that think like Texas is no good. That's a really good football team, guys. Yes, yep. yes. I don't, I don't yep. think they're dead by any means. And I, I fully expect these teams to play a rematch in the Big Twelve Championship game. I think Steve Sarkeesian's. I think they've got a talented football team, and I think they're going to be, yep. they're going to be motivated to get another shot at Oklahoma. But you look at Oklahoma's schedule the rest of the way. And Shit, both of their schedules, Texas too. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, OU's got UCF, Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia, BYU, and TCU left. Mm. Mm. And you mm. start thinking about, and I know mm. Oklahoma State just destroyed Kansas State, did not see that one coming. No. But Kansas and Lawrence is your toughest game left. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, credit TCU, to them. TCU is in shambles this year. right now. Yep. I mean, West Virginia, but they come to Norman, right? No use great in Norman. I just – that's yeah. where – the thing that that game did, Aaron, was it changed – I think it kind of changed the expectations maybe for everyone, players, coaches, fan base for Oklahoma this season. Like, all of a sudden, it's starting to feel like a situation where – 
Yeah. Definitely Big 12 title game or bust. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's starting to feel like more than that when you look at the remainder of the schedule. Well, so I, I gotta go. I want to go back to the game real quick, and I, I'm pretty sure you were there. Oh yeah. I went into the game saying, you know, I I felt like Texas is is a team that has a lot of NFL talent, NFL receivers, NFL quarterback, NFL defense alignment. Not saying like Oklahoma doesn't, but I I do feel like there was somewhat of a, a, a talent gap between the two. You being there and seeing, and because you, you always tell, like, did they look equal walking out of the bus mentality when you looked at Oklahoma and Texas? Was it fluky, or does Oklahoma have the talent to match up with Texas? So it's interesting. And if you if you line the the starting twenty twos up, you're taking Texas's group. You just yep. are, right? Yep. You think about the guys they have. Uh, not only along the defensive line, right? Tavondre Sweat and all what three sixty of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, Texas looked better than Oklahoma in a un in uniforms. The thing that you can't measure when you just look at when you look at the two teams like that, you can't measure who's ready to knock the shit out of the other team. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that was the thing that. It didn't surprise me. It actually made me very happy. OU was the more physical team. Yeah. Yeah. They were, Imagine they, they that. may not have been the most talented. Imagine team. that. Texas, a talented Texas team getting out physical game. Surely not. I We've know. never seen that before. I, but just like you guys mentioned, I think Texas is a physical team. Now, back when I was team. playing, we used to say, hey, we're going to show up in Dallas. These guys are soft. Like they, they're entitled. It's a country mm -hmm. club, like all this stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, fuck I, yeah. I think Sark has done a, he's done a good job, kind of changing the mentality of that program, especially at the line of scrimmage. But oh, you whooped their ass at the line of scrimmage for the most part. They did, they did, and that's football, man. We, we can talk about Xavier Worthy and Adonai Mitchell and Ewers, like all these guys. They're going to be high NFL draft picks, but. If your opponent's hitting you in the mouth more often than you're hitting them in the mouth, that's football, man. And that's that's the game well, in its he, simplest form. And you and I talked a little bit last week offline, Gabe, and, and your one of your concerns was the offensive line for Oklahoma. Like they felt you felt like in your offensive lineman, you felt like they haven't shown maybe the ability to match up with Texas defense line. Like, is that concern still there, or was this just was this elevating them, themselves for just one game, or did they show you enough that like this could be their identity this season. So I, I wasn't concerned about the tackles for Oklahoma. When you look yep. at Walter Rouse, the Stanford transfer at left tackle, and Tyler Guyton. By the way, Tyler Guyton was the best offensive tackle in that game. Yep. He's better than Kelvin Banks. Now, Kelvin Banks, is a, he's a true sophomore. He's going to be really, really good. But people need to relax a little bit about the things that they say. He's not the best tackle in the country. And I'm not... I, I'm not just I'm not just trying to, you know, dunk all over Kelvin Banks. He's gonna be a really, really good player. He's just young. He's got a lot to learn. He's got he's gonna get a lot better. But people have gotten a little out of hand with everything they're saying about him. Mm -hmm. But OU's tackles against Texas edge guys. I, I don't think Texas has they don't have any premier edge players. Who was no. the left tackle? Uh, that blocked Rouse. two two for one on the final play of the game. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Because that's that honor guard, Game of Thrones, Kings guard shit right there, bro. That's how it's done, <laughs> Gabe. That shit got me fired up. That was my favorite highlight of the weekend. We call that the Gandalf. You shall not. Yeah. Die. <laughs> oh, wow, Gabe. Now you're no. really fucking talking my language. Dude. Yeah, no, but he <laughs> he he's been good, and he was playing banged up, right? He's had an ankle problem, and uh, now that OU's got a bye week, hopefully he can get a little healthier, but. Venables talks about uncommon effort all the time, right? Mm. That's something he preaches constantly. And that was a great example of that. That, and it's just a, it's a really smart football play. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a really smart football play, but I was, I was impressed with OU's interior and make no mistake about it. They got their ass kicked a lot, right? And that's, yeah. that's the thing. When you play against good players in college, you start you start losing reps and you're kind of like, wait, what's going on? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm not yeah, used no, to this. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what happened, right? Byron Murphy, Devondre Sweat, like Alfred Collins, those guys are good players. Yeah. I and mean, those guys are NFL players. 
but the interior, the tackles won the battle, right? Like I thought they would. The interior was what I had question marks about. And Troy Everett and Andrew Raym and McCade Matoyer and then Caden Green, he came in for Troy Everett. Who had who did some good things, but is just kind of an undersized guy. Aaron, what he is is he's a center. He was a yeah. center playing left guard. I, I think he's going to be a good center for OU moving forward. But Bill Beanbow, I think, is twenty five snaps into the game, brings a true freshman in to play left guard against mm. Byron Murphy and Devondre Sweat. Mm. Now, Caden Green is huge. He is a massive true freshman, but. And he lost some battles, and actually the second play he was in, he went the wrong way. <laughs> but <laughs> Classic. <laughs> but all things considered, the players he was playing against, uh, just everything that was on the line in that game, like that setting there at the Cotton Bowl, for a true freshman to come in and to play the way that he did, I mean, that's good shit, man. That That's, yeah. that's big-time stuff. And it'll be interesting to see if that kind of springboards him and his confidence, and maybe he's the starter the rest of the way. We'll we'll see. But, yeah, the interior, it wasn't perfect, man. But I don't – I do the radio broadcast for OU. I don't even remember calling Tavondre Sweat's name during the no, game. No, very few times. I, I want to go to the quarterback position, and, and Gabriel was amazing. And, and, and T-Bob brought up, like, he should be – number one in most people's ballots right now if you get to do a Heisman pick today. Like, that yeah. was a, a tremendous no, no. win, and he has the stats to back it up this entire season. He is a hell of a runner. He, he I said this before on, on this show. I think I said it yesterday, too. He's six foot 205, and he runs like he's 6'4", 240. Not afraid. Like, you see him taking guys on the goal line. You see him, you know, not, not sliding as much. Is there a worry going forward the rest of the season of, of him – maybe protecting himself a little bit more, knowing that if you're going to have to beat Texas again in the Big 12 championship game, he can't be trying to take on defenders left and right. Yeah, I think Levy does a good job of protecting him. Yeah. So you look at what OU did kind of up to that point, right? And you saw Dylan Gabriel do quite a bit with his legs in the Iowa State game, right? Yeah. But before that, he really wasn't very involved. He did some against Cincinnati when they needed it against a team that's got a couple of really good defensive linemen, right? But Lebby, he sprinkled just enough QB run game in there, in my opinion, to make defenses work on it and think about it. Now, Texas, it's a different game, right? You got to do what you got to do to win that bitch. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, that's mm -hmm. just, that's where it's at. So... You saw him, you saw him lean a little more heavily on that stuff, call some more true QB run game. Whether they had a couple QB gap schemes that were really good, yeah. where they got an extra hat in the scheme. Love they had, I thought they ran the draw effectively. Mm -hmm. And they they knew, like, hey, this is one of those games you're gonna have to you're gonna have to run it quite a bit. Yep. I don't expect that to be the case in all of these games the rest of the season. Right now, they're still going to do some of it, yeah. but I, I think well, he's going he's going to run two on his own at times. Like he's, oh yeah, he's, he's, yeah yeah he's going to take he off. He's, like that was more of the bigger runs, anyways. Like things weren't open, he took off and got some yards with his legs. Yeah, no, and that's yeah. I mean you know as well as anyone. I mean that stuff, especially if you catch a defense playing man in the back back end, they got their backs turned. Like yep. that stuff mm -hmm. can be deadly, and it could just be completely deflating for a defense on like it's a third worst. and seven, third and eight. Fucking worst. It's the worst. But he's been really good, man. His uh, his leadership's been great. Uh he's playing he's pre playing really efficient football. And I, I think he's gonna continue to get better. Right. Yeah. I mean you gotta imagine he's gaining like the confidence yeah, that true. you gain from going out there and essentially becoming an OU legend on yeah. Saturday. Yeah. It's it's going to be interesting to see the way he looks the rest of the way. But, yes, him staying healthy, Aaron, it's key for this football yep. team. Jackson Arnold's going to be – he's going to be that dude. There's no doubt about it. But for this season, like, Dylan Gabriel is what makes this OU offense go. Uh, you, you mentioned that you played for Venables and so you kind of knew what you were getting into and you were a believer in him. So 
tell us to who many of us Brent Venables was kind of an unknown, you know, in Dabo shadow clips, or whatever, like what makes Brent Venables such a good coach? Why did you think he could usher, you know, take over the legacy of, like I said, maybe the most successful program of all time outside of Alabama. Like what made you believe the Venables, that guy to get you in the sec and take over that, that legacy. I, I mean, there's a lot, but, I think attention to detail. He's just is an insane X's and O's like game planner type of guy. Hmm. Insane passion for football and for people. Like it, it, you get in a room with him, Aaron. Have you ever called a game? He's he's been on the no. coaching staff for. Uh oh, dude. It's just I don't know. He just when you're around him, he kind he kind of makes you feel like you're the only person in the room. Mm, and good he, he's yeah. one of these guys got an incredible memory also but insane attention to detail incredible passion for football and then like he i don't know man he's just like all in on it there's like you know you hear these coaches talk about having balance in life yeah not really like, fuck balance <laughs> no he's and he's he's a great family man that's another thing but <laughs> Dude, he's just a football guy, man. And the, this is the thing. It's like the – it's like an unrelenting intensity and like an unrelenting demand. And the best coaches I ever were, – I were ever around were – they they weren't my buddies, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Especially in you. college. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. half of me – like I love the guy and the other half of me like wanted to kill the guy, you know? Mm-hmm. 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 And Venables, he's, I mean, he's just unrelenting in preparation. And the thing about him is, like, he's the first one in. He's the last one to leave. He doesn't demand any more buy-in, any more investment from his players than he demands from himself. And the like, I just remember, like, the physicality of our practices when he was there. I thought a lot of that, not all of it, but quite a bit of it, had kind of gone away from OU's program. Uh, right? Going out to practices and like some days they didn't do nine on seven. And I'm just like, what is going on here? <laughs> <Mm-mm. Nope. laughs> and now Venables, he's brought like there's just an intensity, like an edge, man. And that he's he's a great man, obviously. Uh his faith's very important to him. There's that component as well. And I think he's doing a good job of recruiting guys that are not only talented, but really love football. Like, and they're yeah. all in on football. So I don't know, man. I, I'm very excited for the future, but so still speaking, gotta, speaking you should that, be, you should be, yeah. especially after the pain of last uh-huh. year, dude, this is freaking massive. Last quick one for me, Gabe. Um, as as you know, T. Bob and I are obviously we're, we're SEC guys. We we cover from from coast to coast on the show. But I mean, he went to LSU. I went to Georgia, and the thought was, it, could Texas and Oklahoma be ready to join the SEC in a year? And this was kind of a prove it year for for them and their fan bases to gain some yeah. confidence. I look at both those teams right now, and so you put them in, in the SEC. They're two of the best four teams in this league today, right now. Uh, like, did you and Oklahoma fan base kind of take away too? Like, yeah, we beat Texas, but like, fuck yeah, bring on the SEC. We're we're ready for the big boys right now. Yeah, I think I think Saturday, uh, I think Saturday made a lot of you feel oh you fans feel a lot better about that, right? Yeah. What's what's ahead? Yeah, and Venables, and he's he'll be the first one to tell you. And he's he said it a lot this year. From a roster standpoint, they're still not where they want to be, right? Especially along the offensive line and defensive line. But wow. they're recruiting at a high level. I think they're going to use, they're going to continue to use the portal to bring in, you know, guys that have been captains, guys that have played a ton of football at other places to come in, just like a guy like Rondell Bothroyd, who started every game for OU, like was a captain at Wake Forest, very productive. They're going to continue to bring those types of guys in, but they're guys, they're getting defensive recruits that they just never got under Lincoln Riley. Yeah. And watching that Bama AM game, 
you just see, I call them creatures. You see the creatures at the line of scrimmage in that game, especially along both of those defensive lines. Mm-hmm. You you have to have those types of guys. Yeah. yeah. So very excited. It's a, it's a really exciting season so far for Oklahoma. They've got a really good football team. There's still work to be done from a roster standpoint to get ready for the SEC, like the weekend, week out grind of the SEC. But yeah, it's it's headed in a really good direction. It's gonna it's gonna get better. I can only imagine what what Venables is doing. Right, it's bye week. They just beat yeah. Texas. They're gonna be recruiting with uh, with yeah. some serious ammo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, in the arsenal this mm-hmm. weekend, boys. He got that hyper fuel in here, that that interstellar fuel to crank the engines up with. All right, last one for me, Gabe. Who wins if they play uh, right now, Georgia or Oklahoma? Yeah, I'm gonna oh. take Georgia on that one. Boo! Fuck you, Gabe. Why? I know. I know. Um, yeah, he's trying. I to just have a certain card, amount. Of, it has nothing to do he's with Eric being here. Okay, yeah. I just, I watched, I watched every snap of that Kentucky game. Uh, yesterday and yeah sure Kentucky made a few mistakes early right penalties that cost them drives extended drives for Georgia. Gabe it's just Kentucky it's a basketball school come that on was, true dude, true that was an ass kicking oh yes, my it was. gosh yes, and it was. what spell do you guys put on defenses that gets Brock Bowers so open how does that um, happen man it's insane to me it's insane mm. now Carson Beck looks good, but I, I think from a roster standpoint, in all seriousness, from a roster standpoint, like George is just in a different place than Oklahoma right now. Yeah, that's fair. Right? I mean, it's that, just, that, but it's everybody. One game. Yeah. That you can say one that game. about pretty much everyone. But <laughs> we'll say like Alabama Texas was State. too, but one game, baby. You never know. One yeah. game. No, I'm I'm with you. One so it, I hope we, hey, this is how I'll put it. I hope we see it. Yeah, yeah. yes. The that match be, uh, that we were cheated out of, we deserve to see it later this year, dude. Yeah, yeah but maybe. I'd, I'd, at this point in time, I'd give, I'd give the edge to the back-to-back national champions. Nah, dude. Nah, bro. Look, I, look. OU leads the nation in picks. I feel good about them shutting down Brock Bowers. Okay, uh, Carson Beck wouldn't know what to do with himself if he had to see that sooner defense on the other side. I'll tell you what, yeah. though. Venables would heat Carson Beck up. I know that. It's like, he ain't going to be comfortable. Uh, Gabe Iker, thank you so much, man. Host of Big 12 today on Sirius XM Radio. He calls the Oklahoma games. Host of Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker Lehman. Uh, Gabe, thank you so much, man. Appreciate you, boys. Thanks for having me.